Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am super excited to be with you today. The title of this live stream is Sustainability is Sexy, Creating a Business Abundant in Cash, Time and Longevity. And this is a really, really important topic for us to chat about. So I'm really excited that you are here. And this stems from a really amazing conversation that I had. Uh, I was a guest in a mastermind yesterday and it was Q&A style. And really what I was there to provide is a bit of an insight into what makes uh, a a seven-figure business run the infrastructure, the systems, the mindset, the shifts that we've made. And it was a really, really great conversation because I think now more than ever, I think it's really easy to get caught up in what other people are doing, what other strategies are working, uh, what what people are doing, right? That from the outside looking in uh, is, is working really well. And this is how we try new things. This is how we are inspired to, you know, create different kinds of programs and offers and and ways of doing things. And I think that's a really amazing thing about the online space is that there are so many incredible people doing amazing things to inspire us into action. Uh, But when I talk about sustainability, True sustainability doesn't come from trends. It doesn't come from following what other people are doing, right? And I want to give a couple of really tangible examples of how things can still be working and making you money, but still not completely in alignment with what you want to create and what you want to do, right? Um, An example of that is a launch style that I had been implementing not last year, but the year before. Uh, It's a launch style that was making significant amounts of money, right? Uh, Hundreds and thousands of dollars as, as part of this style of launching. But after four or five launches in this way, I realized that even though it was working, it was completely depleting me. I would be in a launch that was really successful from a financial perspective, but was really unsuccessful in so many other areas. And that was a really hard thing to shift because from a cash perspective, which is obviously a huge metric that we measure launches off of from a cash perspective that external metric this launch style was badass right it was it was worth it right we were absolutely killing it from a financial metric perspective with these launches the first time I launched in this way I think it was like a hundred forty thousand dollar launch Right. So it would be really easy for me to say, well, this works. So if it's not broken, let's not fix it. However, when I looked at all of the other metrics of a launch, you know, how I felt throughout the launch, my energy levels, my nervous system, right? My values, all the things that were important to me, it was unsuccessful. Right. And so that's just a really tangible a tangible example of something that was just not sustainable. And while it was working, there was always going to come a time when it stopped working, right? Because it wasn't something that felt good. And slowly but surely, it, I started realizing that. And so we moved away from it. Okay. Another example is there are many mentors and coaches online. Uh, I've had mentors that I've worked with that their business model and their way of coaching um, is to have one or two products to really refine them, uh, you know, really just, yeah, hone in on one or two 
key products that you become really well known for that are just rinse and repeat that do really well in your business. And, and that's how you build your business right now. That's not, that's not wrong advice. I don't think there's really anything that's wrong. Right. However, that is not sustainable for a business like mine for an energy type like mine. Okay. The idea of having one or two products sounds like actual torture to me, right? But I also have many clients that I work with that have one key product, okay? So what I'm really starting to allude to here is that sustainability doesn't come from following a trend, you know, doing lots of reels, um, you know, like putting hashtags in your, in your Instagram stories, having one product because that coach over there has got one product and they're making lots of money or launching a different offer every single month or having high paid offers and, you know, low ticket offers or having a blend of everything or only having one. Like what I'm saying is that true sustainability comes from you really owning your strengths as a CEO understanding your strengths, understanding your point of difference and building your strategy and building your business model, your systems, your infrastructure, your mindset around that. And the way that I know this is because I have been able to compare two really similar years in terms of cash that had completely different strategies and energy. So our 2021 year in my business and our, and our 20, our 2020 year and our 2021 year in business. So last year was virtually like the same amount of cash. I think it was like 60 grand difference. So I've been able to really sit and compare and be able to provide you with as part of this training the lessons and the five key kind of areas that I shifted to have the million dollar year that we had in 2020, which was unsustainable, to then have the million dollar cash year in 2021 that was sustainable, that was completely sustainable, uh, that was built off of me kind of working, uh, you know, 20 hours a week, uh, my nervous system felt supported. My life didn't suffer. You know, I would, I, f- I really feel like last year we built all of the infrastructure and the sustainability required to build a, a very abundant business that was also ticking the boxes in all of the other areas. Okay. So I want to share with you five key areas Uh, that really speak to this topic around sustainability being sexy and building a business that is abundant in cash, abundant in time, abundant in overflow, abundant in joy, and obviously stands the test of time as well. So I want to talk about five key areas, okay? So the first area is going to be owning your strengths as a CEO and why this is so key to the impact your business model has on your bank account and the sustainability of your business. Secondly, the infrastructure behind a million dollar business, which we worked really hard on last year. The mindset shifts necessary to start calibrating your nervous system to more impact with less input. Number four, why knowing your point of difference is key to scaling to a million dollars plus and at every level of business. And then lastly, number five, when and how to build a team around you to support you in taking your business to your desired level of impact and income. So juicy, right? So I'm going to touch on a couple of points for each of these five areas. If there is a particular one of these areas that you feel really called um, to explore or you would like me to expand on, please send me a DM. I would absolutely love to chat because I feel really passionate about this topic and about creating a business model that is really abundant in not just cash, but time and joy and nervous system support and love and just beautiful energy. Okay. Mainly because like I said, I have 
I have built a business in a couple of different ways. One being very much in hustle and very much not, not not necessarily out of alignment. I don't want to say that it's out of out of alignment at all because I don't really believe that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have done anything differently. However, I have really seen what it looks like to build a business that is really honoring our strengths and point of difference as, as uh, for me personally, as a CEO. So the first topic that I want to explore is owning your strengths as a CEO and why this is so key to the impact your business model can have on your bank account and the sustainability of your business. So there is a saying, and I, I, I don't know who said it, I th- it might've been Michael Jordan or it could have been even Tony Robbins. I'm not quite sure, but, and I'm kind of butchering it, but effectively what it says is let's spend more time owning our strengths and prioritizing our strengths rather than trying to get better at our weaknesses. And that's always really resonated with me. Um, I think that sometimes we, we can be, we can be told and we can get into this energy of like, oh, well, you know, I need to get better at that, or I don't like doing this in my business. So I need to kind of, I need to shift my mindset around that. And sometimes if it doesn't feel good in your business or you don't like doing it, that's a pretty good indicator that maybe it's just not right. Okay. So owning your strength as a CEO, right? How does this impact your business model and how does this impact your bank account? So I want to give some really tangible examples and tangible shifts that we made in my business in 2021. So One of the things that has been very true for my business journey is that I chose to not grow and expand and scale in isolation. And what I mean by that is I have always invested in business more business, business, mooring, business, mentoring, mindset, coaching, uh, energetic support. I've worked with um, our um, rapid transformational therapy coaches. I've worked with hypnotherapists. I've worked with various business mentors, some short-term, some long-term. I've invested in courses. I've invested in masterminds. I've worked uh, worked with um, coaches privately. I have worked with energy healers, energy practitioners, psychic mediums and astrologers. Like I have really really, really prioritize that in my business. Again, not right or wrong, just matter of fact, something that I've done. Yet when it came to my, the way that I was running my coaching business, I was really not tapping into that being a really massive strength, which it is, right? Having beautiful relationships with all of these different mentors and having all of this experience in various different modalities is a strength as a coach and as a mentor. And so in 2021, I shifted, this is a really tangible example. I shifted my one-on-one container, my private mentoring container from something that was predominantly me. So just, you know, calls with me, Voxa, that mindset and energetic support from myself, which I'm a badass, so that's great anyway. Uh, But what I added into this container to make it really juicy and just to elevate the entire experience is one, I increased the time for for this container. So it is now a six-month container. And I feel that in 2022, this year, I will likely move that to one year because personally, I have received the most benefit and the most impact by working with a mentor for an extended period of time. So that being a strength of mine is something that's happened for me personally. I wanted to emulate that in my business and my private clients get access to guest expert calls. So they get access to multiple calls with my personal energy practitioner. And they also get uh, multiple calls with experts, which is based on what they need in their business, right? So I work with hiring a leadership expert. I work with an email marketing expert. I work with style and embodiment mentors. I work with energy practitioners, psychic mediums and astrologers, um, copywriters. Like I, I, there's a smorgasbord of coaches and mentors and support that can be accessed by my clients as well as my team. So my 
my my tech team, you know, our behind the scenes team at, at you know within my business and within my company, right? So I really identified that as a strength as an entrepreneur and built my business model around that, which is like, I have never been more lit up by my private clients. Like I'm so excited about all of the containers that I offer because they really are playing to my strengths and I really, really love them. Um, Another thing is um, verbal communication, right? Like I'm a verbal communicator. I love live coaching. I love doing this. This is like my favorite part of my business. And so I really prioritize that. You know, I, we started to take our the podcast more seriously. We started to prioritize going live every week. And I know that if I'm not getting time to record podcast episodes, to go live every week uh, and, and to be communicating verbally online on social media, that that is problematic because that is a strength of mine. And it's something that I really love. It's something that I really enjoy. Okay, so my strategy shifted there. And of course, because I love doing this, because this is one of my strengths, obviously this has had an impact in terms of people wanting to work with me as well. Okay. Um, what's another thing that I wanted to mention in relation to this? Uh, oh, we shifted the way that we launch. And one of the things that we, that I really love um, is, is email marketing. And I really love having a, having a wait list for our, for our launches. And I realized that something that was really true for us and, and something that was very obvious in terms of our metrics and how many people kind of um, register for different events and things that we've got going on is that um, we have a really beautiful, loyal, um, active, engaged community, right? You guys, without you guys, nothing exists, right? And so we decided to shift to a wait list style kind of launch process in my, in my business, because we really have like really great opt-in rates because for the last four years, I have provided a lot of free value and I love this part of my business. And so what that has fostered and built is a really engaged community. And what we found is that the way that we were launching and the way that our um, systems were structured was really not taking advantage of that. And so it's no surprise then that we have had some really, really successful and our most successful launches with this style. Okay. So owning your strengths as a CEO, right. And the way that you like to run your business, your communication style, you know, what's important to you. Like this is so key to how you build your business model, which in turn impacts your bank account. Okay. Like I said, the idea of having one product that I refine and and that's the only thing that I sell just feels like actual torture for me, but there are it's so many examples of entrepreneurs that have one or two key products that are multi-million dollar earners that are obsessed with their business, right? So what I'm saying is like this sustainability, this like aligned business model, which also is directly correlated to your, your bank account is, is really, really important. Okay. So that's the first uh, piece that I want to talk about when it comes to sustainability being sexy. The second thing is the infrastructure behind a million dollar business, okay? And this is, again, something that I think is uh, going to be very unique to you as an entrepreneur, okay? As an example, so I think the first thing that's really important and something that we really prioritized in 2021 uh, that is, you know, an unsexy thing. I know we're talking about sustainability being sexy, uh, but I'm not sure that actually, no, there's probably some people that get really excited about standard operating procedures. I am not one of them. However, we really prioritize cleaning everything up in our business in 2021. So what that means is we have a master SOP spreadsheet, standard operating procedures that anyone could come into my business, any, you know, temporary VA, temporary OBM, anything, copywriter, and be able to go into our SOPs and be able to handle it, 
right? So if a, if a, um, if, so, if a client needed to be onboarded and they needed access to a particular program, if there was a bounced payment, if they needed to set up a Facebook group for a new program, like literally whatever it is, they can go into here and be able to find it. And this is obviously part of building a sustainable business model that isn't reliant on you doing repeatable tasks manually. Okay. But part of what I want to share in relation to this too, is that our project management system that we use in, in my, in my business called Asana. Some of you probably use Asana, maybe you use Trello or monday.com. There's lots of different versions. I have never been in that for a long time. I told myself that a good CEO would be in Asana and be assigning tasks and know what's going on. And I don't remember the last time that I went into there. And in fact, our, in our onboarding documents for new contractors and new, hey, Lindell, and new, uh, you know, yeah, contractors, staff members, you know, new hires in our business, they are onboarded. Uh, you know, they have to go through a particular Google Drive folder. And one of the documents in there is a communications document, tells them exactly how to communicate in our team. And it specifically says in this document, do not email Jazz and do not tag her in Asana because you will get her response on neither platform, right? So I'm very, very specific around what, what I get excited about and what feels good for me as an entrepreneur and being in Asana is not one of them. <laughs> okay. So again, like the infrastructure behind a million dollar business for my million dollar business is going to look different for an entrepreneur that is also a million dollar uh, business owner, but, but has completely different systems. Okay. You're starting to see this theme here. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping around sustainability being something that you get excited about that suits your energy style and your way of being. Nothing is more sustainable than you, okay? Um, repeatable systems so that launches are spacious. You know, like we, anything in your business that is repeatable, client onboarding, right? Social media repurposing. Okay, what happens when you do a live on Instagram, as an example, right? We have an SOP for what happens when I go live. So I will go live on Instagram. I will also, I'm, I'm live right now in my Facebook group. Okay. Because I have lots of people that prefer to watch things on Facebook and we will also upload this to the podcast because so many people love to, I love to listen to podcasts, right? It's convenient. So there is a repeatable process in our master SOP spreadsheet for repurposing an Instagram live that also includes uh, some Instagram story snippets, which you will see over the next couple of, couple of days on social media, right? So all of these things that are repeatable that don't really change, there should be a system for this. There should be an SOP for this, right? You don't need to be the one that's repurposing things in your, in your business. That's something that um, an offshore VA can do, right? Or a VA that's already in your business. They can do that for you because it's easy work. It doesn't change, okay? So these repeatable systems, you know, we, 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 we did this in relation to launching as well. You know, a real, a, a finding a launch style that really suits me, my strengths, and it's rinse and repeat, yeah? It's a repeatable system, that means that my nervous system is calm and there is a lot of spaciousness in my business because we don't have to answer and direct people to the same question all of the time. Client onboarding and delivery. This is a really, a really big area um, that we really doubled down on in 2021 that is important for any business level but particularly if you want to scale because retention is, is such a key part, right, of, of being a business owner, yeah? The third category that I wanted to talk about is the mindset shifts necessary to start calibrating your nervous system to more impact with less input. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this training, a lot of these lessons have come from the fact that 
in 2020, we had the same cash as we did in 2021, but an entirely different business model, an entirely different way of being. And a lot of that came from the mindset shifts that I needed to make to calibrate my nervous system and my mindset to being able to make the same amount of cash, but in literally a quarter of the time. And what I'm talking about here is input, right? I'm talking about hours worked, okay? My accountant said to me, this came from my accountant 18 months ago, Jazz, the most sustainable businesses are the ones that run without you. So how can you build a business that is not reliant on you being in your business 24 seven? And so that's what I started. That's what I did. I built a business that is not reliant on me being in my business every day. I don't work every day. I work three days a week. Okay. So your mind may want to make a million dollars, but this doesn't necessarily mean that your nervous system can hold that. Now I'm going to be teaching a two day uh, masterclass on this in March because I'm so freaking pumped about it. And it's something that has been life-changing for, for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to dive into that a little bit more next month. So stay tuned for more information on that, but something that I wanted to share that has been important for me in this space and really, yeah, calibrating my nervous system to growth in less time is getting really clear on exactly what I desire. And, ex- and, and what kind of alluding to what we've already been speaking about in this training about our, you know, our strengths as CEOs, everyone's going to have a different strength. Some CEOs are going to be brilliant at writing copy. And so what I would suggest for a CEO that loves writing, that is really brilliant at it is, <coughs> excuse me that is really brilliant at writing is do you do a long form blog post every week? Do you do a weekly newsletter? Do you do guest blogs uh, for other entrepreneurs that have similar clients and a similar audience? Have you pitched your work to magazines, to publications, right? There's lots of PR opportunities for those that love to write. Okay. And like I said, there are also entrepreneurs that love verbal communication. So I would provide uh, support and and advice and a strategy around having a podcast, you know, doing regular Instagram lives and repurposing this in many different ways, right? Can you take a snippet from a video, take a snippet from an IG live and pop it on your grid, right? As a little video, can can you do a 15 second reel? You know, what are some ways that can be repurposed? So again, like really, really honing in on what your strengths are and what you enjoy as an entrepreneur, what you desire, what do you desire to do in your business? And from this place, you can start to really think, act, be in a way that is congruent with that. What I found in 2020, even though the financial metric was there. Our launches were successful. Things were working. What I desired deep down was overflow, was overflow in time, overflow in space, overflow just in all areas. I wanted my business to fit in with my life. I wanted space. I wanted ex- an overflow of experiences with my family, with my daughter. Like I want, I, like I, des- I craved this. I desired this deep down, but by bis- my business model, my mindset was completely incongruent to that. And so the moment I got really clear on what I desired as a business owner and what I desired as an entrepreneur, I started to be and think and act in a way that was really congruent with that. Like I said, I changed. I completely, I pretty much burned everything to the ground and started again. I I, I changed the way that I offer uh, my private coaching. I created different containers. I changed the way that I ran existing containers that I offered. 
based on what would be congruent with what I craved and what I desired, right? As a business owner, as a space holder, I really desire deep connection. Something that I desire as an entrepreneur is to have the kind of relationship with clients where we are equals, where we are in a friendship, where we have a mutually beneficial relationship. I really, really desire deep connection in my life. I am not someone that is going to sit there and small talk with you. Literally can think of nothing worse. I desire deep connection. And so I started creating my experiences with that in mind. I made sure that when we created expansion and we were setting up what we wanted to create as part of Expansion Mastermind, that there was small group Q&As, right? There was opportunities for the women to connect with one another through our mistress matchups, right? Like you can see all of these examples of how connecting with what I desire as an entrepreneur, what I value as a human, right? As an entrepreneur, but as a human, And I started to act and be in a way that was congruent with that, including my mindset. So whenever something would come up around, well, you know, the only way that you know how to have this kind of cash is when you're working 50, 60 hours a week. I would question that. I would sit with that and be like, but I desire overflow. I desire space. I desire time. I desire experiences. I desire joy. I desire a nervous system that is calm. And so I acted from that place and I simply decided this is what I desire. What do I need to create? How do I need to be? What do I need to do? How do I need to think in a way that is congruent with that? Like I said, we're going to dive into this next month as well. Uh, It's something that is really big that I, that I talk about in all of my programs and, and and with my private clients, because I really believe that, and I know from personal experience that calibrating my nervous system to make more in less time and calibrating my nervous system to increased wealth and abundance and joy and gratitude and all of the things is something that is really challenging because our conscious mind can want want one thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that our nervous system is prepared for that. Yeah. Um, The next thing, and we're going to fly through these last couple of things, why knowing your point of difference is key to scaling to a million dollars plus, but actually at every level of business. So I coach on this in uh, Social Boss, which is my social media program, um, which all of my expansion mastermind clients get access to. There's still a few spaces left to join us as well in expansion if you would like to do so. Uh, but you can also join the waitlist for Social Boss on my website. But what are you doing that sets you apart from others? How are you doing it? You know, I just mentioned before, that's something that I deeply value as as an entrepreneur in my business is deep connection. So I prioritize that. I make sure that all of my containers, containers, even if there are a lot of people in the container, right, that there there is still some element of intimacy and deep connection and that my clients feel seen and heard, even if if they're in a program with 30 other people or 40 other people or 50 other people, I still want to think about some creative ways that that can be created. You know, none of my programs are currently offered evergreen, right? I don't, I don't, I don't have passive income from programs. And there's lots of entrepreneurs that would tell me that I'm crazy, (laughs) And maybe that will change in the future. But like I said, I really crave connection. I really crave my clients feeling seen and heard. And so the idea that someone could go and purchase an offering of mine and complete it without being in a container doesn't appeal to me as an entrepreneur. And so this is also part of my messaging and part of my marketing, right? Because this is a point of difference. This isn't about you know, I'm better than you or I'm better than another entrepreneur. This is actually just about identifying, well, what is something that I'm doing that is different to the market that I can share about, 
right? It's not from a place of putting other businesses down or putting other ways of being and other business models down. It's just, do you have a unique method that you use with your clients that helps them to get results? And do you share that online? Maybe you are offering something that nobody has actually offered before. Maybe you're pioneering something really new and innovative. Say that, you know, maybe you have a personal experience that really forms part of your values. And this is why you do what you do. Are you sharing that as part of your content? Okay. Think of brands like doTERRA and Mercedes Benz, right? Like they consistently speak to quality as part of their point of difference. It's everywhere in their marketing. Yeah. The last topic is around when and how to build a team around you to support you in taking your business to your desired level of impact and income. Oh, this was huge for my business. Um, a couple of things. I, I have to jump off in a moment as I have a client call, but I'm going to record a podcast episode um, going through these key points because I feel like this deserves some airtime because these are really, really important um, points around creating a sustainable business. I learned to hire before I'm ready. Nobody wants to hire from a place of desperation and need and franticness. We really took our time. We spent all of 2021 really working on our team. And I'm really glad that we did that. I learned a lot about hiring and about leadership. I worked with a hiring coach for over a year and this is something that I'm able to support clients with in such a level of depth because we did it in our business. So hiring before I was ready was really powerful to hire just from a place of like a calm nervous system. I wasn't, it wasn't out of desperation, which means that we made some really, really beautiful and aligned decisions in relation to, in relation to team. And I also really busted a lot of myths around hiring and that it needs to be expensive and it needs to be hard. It needs to be challenging. Uh, it doesn't need to be that way. You know, our team costs are anywhere between 10 and 20% of our overall monthly revenue. And we have like five or six contractors, you know, so it doesn't, when you're really strategic in this way and you're very intentional about what you need in your business and you make decisions that are like congruent with that hiring and building your team to support you can actually be a really easy, easeful and impactful process as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to record a podcast episode separately, I think, because I really, I didn't realize that I was going to talk for so long about these topics. Um, but I would love to hear from you. Uh, if any of these topics have resonated, I'm just going to do a really quick recap about the five areas um, that really speak to this topic of sustainability being sexy and creating a business that is abundant in cash and time and longevity and just all of the things. The number, the first one is owning your strengths as a CEO. The second one is the infrastructure behind a million dollar business. The third is the mindset shifts necessary to calibrate your nervous system to more impact with less input, knowing your point of difference. And then lastly, when and how to build a team around you to support you in taking your business to your desired level of impact and income. So I'm going to record a podcast episode, but if, if, I'd love to hear from you. So come and send me a DM if you want to learn a little bit more about one of these topics, if something has inspired you to take action, or maybe there's something that I've said that you're like, oh, I didn't know that. I would love to hear from you in my DMs. If you feel called to join me in my world in any way, shape or form, I would love to support you. Uh, so please come and send me a DM and looking forward to connecting. Have a beautiful Wednesday.